Well, hello good people. Today I happen to be just surfing the net and catching up on all the latest on the usual platforms like Forge and Focus. And I noticed that just a few hours ago, there was a new version release 2.5. So I thought it'd be cool to check out what has been updated. And if we click on the releases link here, it's going to direct us to a page to, first of all, how to update it if you've installed it manually. Now I'm going to show you how to do that or within Pinocchio as well. And there's quite a few changes that has happened here. One of the ones that really sticks out to me is support for the Pony XL model. We see here there was a style added for Focus Pony and uh, previously they already added Playground V2.5 and they've updated some of the default models for Anime to Anima Pencil XL, Dream Shaper XL Turbo for the Turbo Mode and for Realism SDXL Film Photography. They also added an enhanced feature similar to a detailer for those of you that aren't familiar with it. It basically enhances faces and hands and things like that. And quick shout out to Mashbit. I think that's how you pronounce it. He's been maintaining focus for the latest few months. The previous developer has been working on other things. Now if you run it through Pinocchio, the way you update it is super simple. Just open up Pinocchio, click on the focus icon and hit this update button. You'll see there there's a command to git pull that means it's going to take all the files download it and update and you see here under new tag we've got version 2.5 now, if you've manually installed it, it's not very difficult. You want to head over to your main focus folder. Make sure you're in the correct folder and how you know that it's the one with the config.txt file. Simply hover over the address bar, type CMD. The command window is going to open and all you have to do is type in git pull and hit enter and then it's going to download all the dependencies and everything else you need to do the update. All right, so once you start up focus, you're going to notice uh, already there's an enhance section here that we could toggle on. We'll come back to it in a minute. So let's first toggle on advanced. And if we go under the preset menu here, you're going to see now there's presets for anime, LCM, Lightning, Playground V2.5, and now Pony V6. We'll definitely revisit that quickly in a few minutes. And basically the presets will automatically set all the backend stuff and the optimal settings. So if I select V6 Pony here, it's going to automatically download the base model. And if you look under styles, there's an option here for focus Pony. And if we go under models, we see that the Pony Diffusion V6 XL model has been downloaded. But for now, I'm going to switch this back to just let's do realistic. I've got a prompt pre-selected here and uh, actually I'm just going to change the aspect ratio. Let's go 832 by 1152 and I'm going to generate a couple images here hoping to get a full body shot so that we can try out the enhanced feature. Now while I wait for this to generate, let me know in the comments below if you want to see sort of like a overall guide for focus. So much has changed since my last video on focus. I thought it'd be a good time to do a full recap on all the little settings and some of the advanced features. So let me know in the comments. So let's try out the enhanced feature. If I zoom in on this one, you see that the face isn't, it's not as detailed as I'd like it to be. And actually the composition of the eyes are kind of warped. Same thing with this image, the details aren't as defined. So the first thing you want to do is deselect random so that we utilize the same seed so we get the same two images. Let's check enhance here and we're going to select the first number one tab there. Make sure you check on enable and detection prompt. We're just going to work on the face, assuming it's going to grab the eyes and the mouth as well. So you can go ahead and just click any one of these that are pre-selected or just type it in. And you can further put a very simple prompt in this area here. I just put highly detailed, beautiful face. In the negative prompt is ugly, but you can leave it blank because it's going to use the prompt from here as well. For now, under detection, I would just leave the default settings. There really is no need to change it unless you really know what you're doing. The generation model is called SAM. Basically, that segment anything where it detects certain areas of the image. 
And under inpaint, we can change the method here. Let's say we wanted to improve face and hands here. Let's do that. We'll leave the denoising strength at 0.5. I do want to change the details a little bit, but if you want it to be more like the original, bring it down to like 0.2 or 0.3. And that's all I'm going to do at this point. So let's go ahead and generate the enhanced images. So what's going to happen is you're going to see it's going to generate the two images again because theoretically you should already have the enhance toggled on and then it's going to do a second pass and you see in the preview window here it's working specifically on the face and giving it more details. So it's like it's doing an automatic in paint and here it's working on the second image. Now I'm going to zoom in as close as possible. If we look at the original image and now here's the enhanced image. You see how the face is much more details in the eyes, the mouth. Now here's a second image. If we take a look at this eye here on her left and even the mouth is a little deformed, the details aren't as prominent. But now with the enhanced version, the eyes are much more defined and clear and the mouth looks more natural. So I really love this added feature. It skips the step of doing in painting manually and it does work for hands the same way. Obviously it's going to take a little bit longer to generate because it's got that second step, but it should still be a bit quicker when you're manually masking it and doing in painting. It's kind of the same process, just done automatically. Next, I want to introduce you to Pony V6. If you're unfamiliar with Pony, I'm going to leave a couple articles you can read about it. Basically, this was sort of a fetish model. The original model literally generated ponies and some NSFW type of images. You could use your imagination. But what ended up happening was they discovered that this model adhered to the prompt very well. It got retrained into Pony V6. There were other iterations prior, but it also excelled in 2D anime manga, that type of style. And since then, there's been some fine tunes that actually perform very well. Now what makes Pony different in terms of prompting is that it was categorized with these scores from one to nine. Obviously the higher the number, the greater score the image got, the lower the score is, let's say from five down, the results weren't that great. Now I'm not sure if you still need to prompt this way, within focus, I haven't had time to check, but basically the way you would prompt this is score under slash nine comma, score under slash eight, underscore up, so on and so forth. I like to go six and up, some people go five and up, and typically in the negative prompt you want to put the lower scores here, but I found that you don't necessarily need it as well. So here's a quick example of the prompt not using the scoring tag. And I love the details. I love its unique style. It's kind of dirty, right? Definitely very colorful. But now adding those score tags, you see it's a lot more cleaner. It's got more definition. And overall, the results honor the prompt a lot more. So it looks like you still need to do it with the base model. And the great thing about these pony models is that the prompt adherence is great. It understands both natural language and your style standard way of prompting for like SDXL, SD 1.5. But of course, the fine-tuned models do a much better job. So I've already downloaded some fine-tuned pony models. This one is called Pony Realism. And I'm going to use the same prompt, generate a couple images here using this model. And you see with this particular model, the hands look pretty decent. It's got more of a photorealism look, although the prompt is more for a 2D illustration. But it got all the details from the kung fu outfit to the cherry blossom trees in the background, the ponytail, pun intended. <laughs> Even this grimacing expression I put into the prompt. Now this hand doesn't look that great, but this one turned out pretty good. But these fine-tuned models do a really good job. I'm going to do one of more of a portrait style just to show you that these fine-tuned models, I would say, are if not better than the current SDXL models because of the prompt adherence, but at least equal to. Now with these images, I didn't bother using the scoring tags. And you see the texture on the face looks very realistic. Doesn't look over-processed. Very natural looking without all the makeup and stuff. Now I'm going to try this 
same seed with the scoring to see if there's a difference. So yeah, I guess there is a difference. So here's the before and the after. Obviously, it looks slightly more cleaned up. Still very natural. The coloring is a little bit off. I think I need to change the sampler. But in any case, you can see the differences between the two. Now, there are so many other fine tunes that you can try out that are dedicated to like anime. This is the one we just looked at, Pony Realism. These blurry ones are NSFW. So if you're into that, you can try those fine tunes. There's Real dream here. This Everclear one I quite like. I tried that out as well. So if you're having issues with the base model, obviously try the fine tune models. I think you'll enjoy the fine tunes much better. This model is so good that I want to cover it on a separate video, but at least now you can use it within focus. And for all the other updates, I encourage you to read the link in the description below. A lot of it is more back-end stuff. But until I release the next video on Focus, I'll see you when I see you.